by accident. I got into this business because I kind of was, I, I got exposed to it in a, in a local station and got excited about being in production. I uh, got excited that people could see your work. got excited that there was some level of applause or recognition and had a big enough ego that it got me hooked. A friend of mine had got me into doing a, uh, a Hoover commercial. I did some music for a Hoover commercial out of Richmond, Virginia in the mid-80s, and that kind of opened my eyes. So when I came back to Pittsburgh, I was looking um, around, uh, kind of keeping my ears open as to who was doing advertising and post-production, and I found a post-production facility that had no audio department and wanted one, foolishly, and uh, I had enough gear that I just said, you know, why don't you just kind of give me a room here and, and I will be your audio division. My misspent youth of uh, playing video games, skateboarding, um, painting band logos on the back of jean jackets and, uh, uh, and, and, and trying to make some sense of it all. Um, my mother likes to say that it was uh, my, uh, 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 my spoiled inner child. All of those different things and, and the different types of, uh, of, of design and communications things, um, I was able to figure out how to do it all in, in one company. I got into the business because my dad was one of the cameramen at Cape Kennedy. And when you see those old rocket launches from History Channel, he was one of about 12 guys back in the early 60s and part of the 70s that used to photograph uh, literally everything that got launched in space. And uh, it was kind of neat because I was always around guys that they weren't film, they didn't call themselves filmmakers, they called themselves cameramen. but. Uh, they had some great stories, and I thought that's kind of an interesting job. So I was always around cameras, so that's how I got involved in it. Initially, I had family members that were in the business um, when I was in high school, so I had uh, conversations with them about sales, about advertising sales, and uh, it sounded interesting, sounded fun, some neat people they got a chance to meet with and work with, client-wise, and companies. So uh, as I graduated from Duquesne, I kind of started applying and talked to some radio stations and got involved in advertising sales. I got into the business because my mother was uh, a director for Greenbrier Treatment Centers. Uh, this was, you know, 20 some years ago. And part of her job was to do marketing and advertising for, I think, four or five Greenbrier centers. And, you know, she, I was at the time uh, interning at, at Communications Inc., which was Platinum Brunner back then. And uh, she had talked to me a little bit about, you want to check this advertising sales thing out. And I uh, was talking about a lot of, uh, of her compadres who, who, who did that work for her at the different advertising mediums and met a lot of them and that's how I got here. My dad was a CPA so I followed that suit and uh, it didn't take me very long to realize I didn't want to be an accounting major. So jumped into marketing and I was fortunate enough to break in uh, in the Pittsburgh market uh, as a media planner and buyer while I was working on my MBA. So it was really a, um, uh, a great foundation for really learning the overall business from a, from a number standpoint, being a business major and having that accounting experience. And uh, you know, it was a great foundation for me to jump right into account service too. Spent a lot of years as a product manager, uh, both here at GlaxoSmithKline and with Becton Dickinson as well in the medical device industry, and a lot of years in sales. It was a natural progression uh, from, from those pursuits. You know what, it was actually kind of, uh, you know that cliche story you were discovered? It kind of happened that way in front of the camera where an agent uh, saw me and, and uh, obviously was taken aback by my amazing looks and my, you know, muscular physique and he thought, you know. No, but uh, so I, I started back uh, in 97 just by accident and also by accident in the job I was at in professional sports, I got into uh, media production. So I was getting a little bit behind the scenes too and in front of the uh, camera and uh, eventually put that together. Through the back door, I, was, I worked as a TV reporter for most of the time I've been in Pittsburgh for 20 years and out of the blue one day I got a call as they were merging these economic development organizations and uh, they said, we're looking for a communications guy, would you be interested? And so I checked it out and it sounded like a, a really good opportunity. I'd been telling the Pittsburgh story for 20 years as a reporter and so I really viewed this as very similar. I'm still telling the Pittsburgh story, but now it's a, with a little more direct purpose of, of improving the economy. I started in 1978, all those years ago, um, in the broadcast side, WTAE, and then I uh, spent five years there and then jumped over to the agency side, spent 15 years with DDF&M, full service agency, 
we were the um, highest media biller at that time in the market in Pittsburgh. The first memory I have of actually being in the business was when I was in fourth grade and uh, it wasn't really in the business but it was my first sale and I was actually in class and I was doing a drawing of, uh, of Jaws and uh, this kid bought it off me for five bucks and that was my first big art sale and I was like I'm hooked. I was like this is it. So I think that was probably the first thing, my first step into the business. A double major undergraduate in psychology and sociology which meant either going to school for the rest of my life or I could be a country radio DJ. So I, <laughs> I went to work for a country radio station and that started uh, about 30 years of multiple media exposure from radio to TV to cable to um, internet, newspaper, a little bit of everything. I was a junior in high school, McKeesport Area Senior High School, and we had a visitor to our class one day. It was a television crew from Channel 11. And I was so intrigued with the activity, the excitement, the lights, camera, action aspect of it. I said, you know what? That's what I want to do when I grow up. And that's how I got in the business. Well, I was an art kid. And uh, it's unbelievable the number of classes I got out of in junior high school and high school so I could do go do the Christmas mural. When I got out of school, uh, I was curious about other things. And I actually used to hang around the library where I went to school. And there I sort of discovered the graphic design was a discipline because I always thought it was like advertising and I actually was not interested in that. Um, I was uh, working at the uh, Pitt radio station for a while and, um, and I wrote for the Pitt News and, and actually the real story behind that, I'm the youngest of six boys and um, we had no money, we were broke, you know, didn't realize I was broke but you know we didn't have much going and uh, when I went to college I had to go to a school, a state school so I can afford to go to school and I, I realized if I become the promotion director of a radio station I can get all this free stuff. And so I just, it's really great. And you know what's so funny about this is that uh, I'm still doing it. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, Sister Fabian uh, is really responsible for that. Uh, sixth grade teacher, uh, like a lot of creative people in, in the visual arts. I had a nun that recognized that I had artistic talent and uh, that really became the incentive to, to study, first to study art, then to study design. Uh, so I studied at the Ivy School of Art in Pittsburgh, a, a great school that's no longer around. It was called the Ivy School of Professional Art. Uh, and then also studied at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. Writing and technology. Um, I love to write and as I was doing that I found that I just understood technology. I had an ability to uh, be able to communicate with people um, that were programmers or people that were what you might call the techie geeky people. Um, I could talk with them and communicate with them, yet translate that for the rest of us and for the others. So it, with a career in writing, it's really kind of difficult to make a living with that, but being able to combine the two, um, I kind of found to be able to do what I love um, and then also be on the cutting edge of things, um, following new technologies and following new digital practices. I think I interviewed anywhere and everywhere, but Ketchum at the time in Pittsburgh offered me a job for $12,500, thank you very much. And that was the best offer I had uh, financially. So being newly married, uh, father of a one-year-old, it was time to you know go for uh, at that point, which I thought would be a good opportunity with Ketchum to uh, start my career uh, after the, the PC experience. I graduated from college with a uh, journalism degree and a minor in uh, advertising. And at that time, back when things were archaic but normal, you could actually go for a job to a firm where the people that worked there actually worked there. It was an advertising agency that had employees and they had a um, internship and I was lucky enough to get one after I graduated. I started at 6666. That was the day I started. All the sixes, that's like bad luck, right? <laughs>